All right, we're back with the first part of this review, and we're going to take a look at the program that you use on your PC to complement the Rockat Cobra gaming mouse. So we'll uh, come across to the uh, computer screen now, and as we can see, I've got this open up. It gives, it's a nice full screen that you can see uh, with the setup. Now, this is like a home page here that you've got for the program. It's called Rockat Swarm, and that integrates with uh, all of the Rockat uh, products. And all you do is you download the update, which is specific to the Rockat product that you've got. In this case, it's the Rockat Cova Gaming Mouse. So as I said, this is like a, a home screen here where you can pin. So there's little pins here. You can unpin that. You pin all the different uh, settings that you like to have all in front. Or you can go to the screens individually for the settings, button assignment, and the advanced settings, which is uh, all quite neat. So... Um, what I'm going to, I'll start off with the settings. So what you can see on the left hand side here is uh, we've got the scroll speed. So when you're scrolling the mouse up and down, whether it be on a website or uh, if you're in a game, changing weapons is usually what the scroll wheel is used for. Uh, below that we've got the horizontal tilt speed, which is in tilt mode, which uh, is probably well, it's something that I won't use. I, I, I don't know much about that. The double click speed, which is pretty obvious what that is. Um, but uh, you can uh, change the, the, the speed in which you need to double click before a double click has, has an effect. On the right hand side of the screen here we've got the DPI switcher. Now this is something that I've used in the past with other mice and I was really uh, happy to see that this mouse has it as well because I do use it a quite a fair bit. There are some occasions where uh, I might be playing a game and the game sensitivity just might not be high enough or might be too high. You don't have to muck around with settings because there's a button on the mouse. I'll show you on here. This one here, if you click that, it will cycle through all the different uh, DPIs. Now, if you don't know what DPI, what I'm talking about there, it's essentially the sensitivity of how the mouse moves. So you can see how the mouse is moving on the screen right now. If I click that middle button, DPI up. it moves the DPI up, so the sensitivity is up. So you'll see that's moving a lot faster, and I'm just moving the mouse the same way. Press it again. 7,000 DPI. So it's now at this 7,000 DPI here. Now that's real high sensitivity. I'm not sure I will use it that high at all. But some people might need it that high for whatever application they're using. Maybe some game might have a default uh, sensitivity that's way too low and you'll have to bump it up. So you can do that. 400 DPI. Now, I like it at the 1,600 DPI. Now, you can change it. These are all default still. I haven't changed these settings, but you can move them across and have the settings different. So, I like the 1,600 there. That feels about right. Or was it 1,650? Anyway, that, that's about right for me. Or you can just reset the default. Uh, yeah, so that's... That's a really good feature that I find a lot of people will probably use. That's really handy. So, and if you don't like that 7000 one and you don't want it to be in the cycle, just click it off and it won't be in the cycle. Okay, so that's the settings part there. Let's move across to button assignment. Now, there is 12 buttons on the mouse. Now, at first I was thinking I could only find 10. I don't know where the other two are, but what I found out is scroll up and scroll down. So. The, the, uh, the action of doing that and that is two buttons. So that's past the two buttons. So there's only 10 actual physical buttons you can press, whereas uh, one, two, three, four, five, six on the other side. And then you've got the seven, eight, nine being the DPI changer and 10 being the click in of the wheel and then 11, and 12 so that's all your buttons there all right now you can uh, change all of these to do whatever you want it to do uh, and uh, it's all pretty easy to do so that's cool you've got menus there for what you want it to do sign a timer so if you want it to run out and go back to normal etc etc advanced settings okay now these are probably a little bit beyond my use because I'm not by any means an advanced um, mouse user uh, but over here uh, the sound feedback uh, for the profile switch so when you sp uh, switch profiles it'll give you some sound feedback and I've got that turned on for the DPI so now I've got that turned on and if I apply it 
I now have 7,000 DPI, 400 DPI, 800 DPI, 1,600 DPI. And then you have the, the voice feedback as to which DPI setting you've got. Uh, I'm not too sure what a polling rate is, so I'm not going to touch that. And now down here, orientation. Now I am left handed, I do use my mouse left handed. However, I will leave this as right handed because I've grown up using a mouse with the left click being the main click and the right being sort of like your options or whatever button. If you change that to left handed, it's going to switch these around, which is, yeah, that's, it just breaks my mind and hurts my head and doesn't work for me. So I'll leave it like that. Over here on the right hand side, we've got the illumination section here. So as you can see on the mouse in my hand, the lights are on. So light on the wheel there and there's a light on the back. Now they're lit and they should be uh, pulsing different colors. It's funny, I was holding this in my hand and I just re went to reach for the mouse to change the settings, which I can't do because it's in my other hand. Okay, so if I set this to fully lit, color flow on, hit apply. Now if we have a look at the mouse, it's going to cycle through, I think it's 16.8 million different colors. So what we got at the moment, it's going to a purpley colour. There we go. It's probably hard to see with the light. Actually, a good effect. Let's close. Close this down. That might look a little bit better there. So we've got a nice blue colour. It's about to go purple because it's shown on the screen. Now it's going to go red. There we go on red and now green so that's how you can have all the different colors you can set it to the a specific color that you want let me just fix this up Ooh. set it to whatever color you want if you want it to stay at a particular color or if you want it to change like I do I just let it uh, flow through the different colors I think it looks nice uh, and down the bottom here we've got game profiles something that I won't use but you know some pretty serious gamers probably might want to use it where you can uh, set it up so you might want to play let me go into here profile manager so that's not where i wanted to go here you're going to uh, what's called the macro manager and you can set up different profiles for different games so you might want to have a particular setup for battlefield and you want that to be different to your arkham uh, arkham city control scheme things like that you can change them all and have them um, set up ready to go for when you play that particular game now for me i won't use that i just usually just set it up similar to the way it is i like the the um, default settings which is um is pretty much good for me so that's how i'll use it and all in all this program is really good it's pretty small it's only about 95 megabytes and then there's a small update to do to download the uh the specific um programming for the rocket pro uh, item that you have uh, and it's uh, it's it's a pretty quick uh, process. Ugh, mumbling my words, T a whole setup took me about five minutes, probably to download, install, plug this in. Real easy to get going. You don't actually need to install this. It will flash its lights normally just in default settings, and the default buttons will already be set up even if you don't install the program. So. You don't want to install more programs on your computer or you don't want to muck around with all these extra little settings that the game has but don't worry about it you don't have to but it's good to have on there because you can just change things should you um, want to with a specific game all right well uh, that's it for this part we'll move on to the next part of the review